the C8 Corvette. There's been a ton of rumors about what's holding up this car and what are the delays behind it. So we're gonna look at those rumors and see how true they are. Now the first rumor was that the C8 Corvette, the mid-engine car, is gonna be coming out at the Detroit Auto Show, but you know, I was there for the debut of the Supra and I was kind of looking around and I didn't see it. My name is Eric. I like to make videos about cars and I've got a Discord server. You can go check it out. You can chat about all kinds of cars completely for free. And of course, subscribe if you're interested in keeping up with the latest news. There's also some engine news from GM itself. So we're gonna take a look at the credibility of that. And we're just gonna take a look and see if these rumors that are alleged to be holding up the car are actually true. So let's dive into it. So the first one is this electrical issue that's supposedly holding up the car and you know I'm on all the forums I'm looking at YouTube I'm looking at Facebook groups I'm looking at all kinds of stuff and there seems to be as far as I can tell only one source for this electrical rumor and that is GMAuthority.com and here's what they say according to sources familiar with the matter speaking to GM and Authority on the basis of anonymity engineers have discovered a major electrical issue with the future Corvette during the development process from what we gather, the vehicle's electrical system can't carry the load necessary to support the necessary components. So what does that mean? What is a CAN? So it's a controller area network. And if you think about your office where you might work, you've got a bunch of different computers, you've got some printers and stuff like that. So it's kind of akin to a local area network in your office, but this is a network inside your car. And nowadays modern cars like the C8 is gonna have maybe upwards of 100 CPUs and different sensors in the car. So the CAN system is essentially a network environment where all these different components can talk to each other and talk to a couple of the major computers which control things. So in a modern car, as I said, you've got way more sensors than you used to. You got speed sensors, you got temperature sensors, you've got O2 sensors and all these different things. There's a lot of electrical load that takes place with all these new types of sensors in cars. My reading of it is with this sort of enhanced level of electronic stuff in the car that the old school 12 volt system that we've had for so many years is no longer able to handle the load, all the different components that General Motors is putting into the car. So so here's a big open question. There's this 48 volt standard, which is perhaps emerging in the automotive space. So Audi is supposedly working on a 48 volt system to handle a lot more of this electrical load. So instead of just an alternator on the engine, they're now talking about using an electrical generator, something a little bit bigger and perhaps a battery pack as well. So we're talking about a mild hybrid system. Allegedly there's this E-Ray Corvette, which might make a thousand horsepower or something like that, which it might be some sort of hybrid, so the move over to a 48 volt electrical system actually might make sense in this context. But obviously this is expensive, and as far as I know, there's no vehicles that you can buy today that have a 48 volt electrical system, but let me know in the comments below if I'm wrong. I didn't do all the research. So will General Motors move to a 12 volt slash 48 volt, perhaps a hybrid electrical system? I don't really know exactly, but let me know down in the comments what you think, and let me know if you think that it's possible that GM is gonna come out with a 48 volt system for the car. So on this rumor, not a lot of information here, but do I give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down as a plausibility? I think it's actually plausible that there are electrical issues with the car. After all, we're talking about a brand new chassis. This is supposedly not a lot of carryover from the C7, so I'm gonna give this rumor a thumbs up. The next one is too much power bending the frame of the car. Let's look at how credible this rumor is. Now General Motors arguably has some of the best engineers in the business. After all, this is gonna be the eighth generation of the Corvette. We're talking about decades and decades of engineering expertise. Now of course, there's plenty of good arguments to be made that GM has made a bunch of garbage cars. There's certainly a lot of less than stellar reliability cars from the past and even in the present right now, but I'm gonna chalk that up to the management culture at General Motors, the culture of trying to save a penny everywhere you possibly can. I'm not gonna really put that on the individual engineers. I think, in my opinion, that General Motors has some really fantastic engineering talent. Okay, so this story was reported all over the media. It was on USA Today, GM Authority, Road and Track, Corvette Forums, and I looked and tried to find if there was more than one source, and there was only one source pointing to the specific rumor, and that is Haggerty.com, and the journalist is Don Sherman. The question, is this 
this source reliable? So we're gonna get into that in just a second. In this Haggerty article entitled, The Real Reason Why the C8 Mid-Engine Corvette is Delayed, Don Sherman writes, the second issue is a structural distortion of the aluminum space frame experienced during testing a prototype equipped with the 900 to 1000 horsepower twin turbo V8. The twist in back was enough to fracture the glass hatch covering the engine. So look, we live in the age of computer-aided design. This is actually not new. CAD design has been around for quite a while now. Certainly the C8 Corvette is not the first mid-engine car. In fact, there's a whole ton of them out there. Probably the newest, most recent one is the Acura NSX, but of course we have McLaren, we've got Ferrari, we have Porsche. Mid-engine design is not inherently new, and some of these cars are actually making a lot of power. I actually find it really kind of a bit of a stretch to think that the engineers didn't properly design the space frame, the chassis, to handle 800, 900, 1,000 horsepower. You can do that in a simulation. You can do that on the computer. There's tons of examples out there. It just doesn't seem credible. GM engineers aren't good enough to do that. I kind of think that's not really the way it is. Mike C7Z at Corvette Forum points out, I think it's an old story brought up to cover up the real problems they were having. They don't want people to know about and the bending frame and broken glass sounds cooler. So the glass on the C8 Corvette, it's the sort of suspended, this interesting design. There's a picture of it up on screen right now. It's also designed to vent heat out from the engine. So it's not strictly speaking attached the rear hatch panel like it would be in a conventional hatch. So that actually sort of further stretches the imagination to think that hmm, the power, the twisting of the torque from this massively powerful engine is going to crack the rear glass. Again, from Mike C7Z at Corvette Forum, he says, what seems more likely is if there's frame bending going on, I don't believe it's breaking the glass since the glass is suspended. I think it's more likely they are breaking rear ends, transaxles on cars, since they hook up better grip than GM is used to. Now to me, that sounds a lot more credible. I could see General Motors breaking engine mounts. I could see them breaking transaxles or axles, whatever you want to call them, because the C8, of course, is rear engine you've got a lot more ability to put power down onto the ground. And with this level of power, true, perhaps General Motors just isn't used to designing the components with enough structural strength to deal with car hooking up all of a sudden and you can snap an axle. It's obviously a common thing that happens in drag racing. In fact, there's videos of the Hellcat. People are breaking their axles on stock power with slicks at a drag strip with about 700 horsepower. That seems pretty credible to me. So let's go back to this single source, which is Don Sherman. Who is Don Sherman? Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with him, but for those that aren't, Don Sherman used to write for Car and Driver magazine. He left in 1987, so this guy is pretty old school. He now writes, obviously, for Haggerty. He writes for, I believe, Road and Track. He's an independent journalist, and he has been doing this for, you know, about 30 years as an independent. So he's been following Corvettes for a long time. He claims to have about 20 sources, both from vendors and suppliers, and also within General Motors. He's says he's got sources at Tremac, which produces the alleged transmission, the dual clutch transmission for the C8, and also at Brembo, which is the brake manufacturer. In my books, Don Sherman is a highly reputable, credible source. This guy's been around the Corvette space for most of his life. He actually worked on a mid-engine car, so this guy is pretty well respected in the Corvette industry, so I've really got no reason to doubt him or his reporting. However, here's a theory. Is it possible that there are different levels of space frame for the base car, the Z06 or the Z06 if you're in Canada. So is it possible that there are different levels of strength and perhaps they put in some reinforcement into the higher levels of cars, which might make it a little bit heavier, but perhaps a little bit stronger? I don't know. That's perhaps a theory that I'm just kind of bouncing around in my head. Let me know if you think, you know, on the production line in the past with the ZR1, if they've done some major changes or some changes to the frame itself to improve structural rigidity and to be able to handle more power. Obviously going to drive up cost on producing those cars. Let me know. So how much stock do I put in this rumor? Well, it's possible that one of these 20 sources that Don Sherman is talking to basically fed him a line. The car is making too much power. It's twisting the chassis, the subframe, and it's breaking the glass. Perhaps as a little bit of marketing hype, just that it would get out and get reported because obviously people know who Don Sherman is. This got splashed all over the news with no source attributable to it other than this anonymous source. So I 
I don't know how credible it is. I don't really think so. I think that somebody at General Motors fed Don Sherman a line, and that's got nothing to do with Don Sherman's credibility. That's just my opinion. So there's a possible third reason for the delay that Don Sherman writes about in Haggerty. Item three is some unspecified bone of contention between those who design Corvettes and the development engineers who steer them to the far corners of the performance envelope. Where is it envelope? I don't know. It could be a visibility issue, some ergonomic shortcoming, or a cockpit design problem. Unfortunately, our sources won't reveal the specific details underlying this concern. So let's think about this for a second. You've got a design team working on vehicles, and you've got this engineering team who needs to make it a reality. Of course, in every car design ever, there's going to be a tension between the designers and the engineers who've got to implement it. The designers want one thing, perhaps they want a thinner C pillar for better visibility, and the engineers say, no, it needs to be a little bit thicker for structural rigidity. There's going to be always this, you know, this duality, there's going to be this tension between the two, so this doesn't sound like anything out of the ordinary. Yeah, it could hold up the Corvette, so how much credibility do I give this rumor? This one's pretty hard to say, obviously, because it's not really specified, so I don't know. Maybe yes, maybe no. Anyways, we know the Corvette isn't here yet, but I've got a little bit of speculation, a little bit of news why I think it might be coming pretty soon, a little later in the video. So the engine rumors. So there is speculation that there are possibly three different engines that are going to be available on the C8. The first one, which seems to be the most credible and is probably going to be available in the base C8, is the LT2. That's going to be probably some kind of variation of the current LT1. We're talking about a traditional overhead cam design, probably around 6.2 liters, something like that, variable valve timing, active fuel management. Maybe Making allegedly, you know, somewhere around 500 horsepower, perhaps a little bit north. That to me seems pretty credible. GM basically takes the current engine that they have, they massage it a little bit, give it a bit more power, drop it into the C8. I'm pretty on board with that one. Now the second one is potentially a lot more exotic, perhaps a 5.5 liter V8 flat plane crank. We heard what sounds like might be this engine at Sebring a couple months ago, and it sounds like a flat plane crank Ferrari in my books. Could also be a V6. Don't really know that one. There's a little bit less detail about that. But the third one is supposedly a twin turbo engine. And we got to look at what kind of twin turbo V8s does General Motors currently have in their engine arsenal. So Automobile Magazine has an article on the Black Wing engine, which is a 4.2 liter twin turbo V8 made for Cadillac. This Black Wing engine, will it end up in the Corvette? So in the CT6 V variation, it makes 550 horsepower and 627 pounds feet of torque. Is it going to end up in the Corvette? Automobile Magazine asked the president of Cadillac if this engine is going to end up somewhere else, and he said, over my dead body. I don't really believe in absolutes. Let's look at that statement for a second. That doesn't sound too promising, right? As Automobile Magazine is reporting, they're only going to make 275 units of the CT6V and some unspecified number of just the regular CT6 and the premium. We know that Cadillac Cadillac is actually not selling a lot of cars. Yeah, they sell a lot of SUVs, but their car numbers are pretty, pretty, pretty low. So I got a question. Is General Motors going to spend millions and millions of dollars developing a brand new engine, which they're only going to use in a couple hundred, maybe like a thousand or two thousand cars? I don't really buy that argument. Talking about the Toyota Supra for just one second, if you don't know, Toyota has partnered up with BMW and the BMW B58 engine is going to be powering the new Supra for financial reasons. Toyota doesn't want to take the risk that they are going to develop a bespoke engine for a car, which is probably going to sell just a couple thousand units per year. Too much of a risk for them. Toyota is about as big as GM, maybe a little bit bigger, so they're kind of risk averse. Going back to GM, how much sense is it going to make for them to develop an engine which is just going to go into a couple thousand units and not somewhere else? I actually have a hard time believing that. I think, and this is my opinion, the Blackwing engine, which is currently making about 550 horsepower power in line with what the LT2 might be making. It can bump that up quite a bit and maybe turn that into some sort of mid-range, maybe like a 700-ish horsepower version for the Corvette. Put some new valve covers on it, put a new cover on top of the engine. Maybe they don't call it a black wing, maybe they call it something else, I don't know. That's my take on it. So I think there's a actually a very good possibility that this engine could end up powering next C8 Corvette. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Oh, and one more thing. So how soon do we 
think that the mid-engine Corvette is coming? Is it gonna be sooner or later? Are we gonna see it in 2020 or 2021? Well, if you go all over the web, it's pretty obvious there's about 9,000 C7 Corvettes sitting at dealers right now. And if you go onto the Chevy website, you can get 0% financing on a Corvette for 72 months. That's an incredibly good deal. That seems to me like they're trying to move some cars. And in fact, there's a dealer who has got a 2018 Z06 for $15,000 off. Now I know this is 2018, it's obviously getting a little bit long in the tooth, but these cars are gonna have to move out of the lots. My guess is that General Motors and these dealers are gonna wanna move these cars because I think the C8 is coming probably a little sooner than later. Now I've got more news on the C8 Corvette and other cars. If you're interested in getting this news a little bit early, you can subscribe to my Patreon for as little as a buck a month. Gives you all kinds of other benefits. Subscribe right over here. See you guys in the next video.